three. All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to TESOL Kuwait's session today. We have two amazing professors with us today. So um, we have Dr. Natia. Dr. Natia is an assistant professor at the Foreign Languages Department at Badawi State Maritime Academy in Georgia. She holds a degree in English uh, philology and is also, uh, oh, and has 10 years of experience in ESP and the EFL field. Additionally, um, she has been invited to lecture at the Department of uh, Heuristics in Batumi as well. And her current research interests include digitalization, EFL education, ESP, academic writing, written communication in English and analytic reading. Um, as for our second speaker who will be joining us today, we have Dr. Tamar Dolizzi, who's an associate professor at the Foreign Languages Department, also at the Tumi State Maritime Academy. And since 2020, she has been elected as an associate professor of the online university. Um, and this is based in Malta. Uh, with the subject of communications and language philosophy. Uh, Dr. Tamari has also been a guest lecturer and visiting professor at the Legal English and Business Communication at foreign universities. Um, she is also a member of the educational team of the International Journal of Knowledge, which is IJKL, as well as the International Journal of Digital Human Humanities Scopus Indexed. Um, she is an invited preliminary speaker at a number of international conferences and webinars and presenters at webinars as well. So ladies, thank you so much for taking the time. Welcome, the floor is yours. Please feel free to share your screen and uh, we can't wait to hear everything you have to say today. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Hello to everyone. And uh, thank you, uh, dear President Reem and uh, Miss Ann for organizing uh, today's session and giving us opportunity uh, to be part of this uh, webinar. So the title of this uh, webinar is uh, Tamar. Uh, I can't uh, see. Let me share. Yes. The title is uh, Fostering Critical Thinking in EFL Education, Strategies for Empowering EFL Language Learners. Uh, um, so background, uh, so uh, let's move to the plan. Yes, uh, today uh, we will discuss. So background uh, to topic. Uh, yes, then, um, so understanding critical thinking in EFL education, strategies for fostering critical thinking, case studies and authentic stories, assessments strategies, conclusion, and uh, the short uh, survey will be provided at the end of the webinar. So, uh, so background, uh, uh, yes, background. Uh, the background of our webinar is uh, the importance of critical thinking in EFL education and its impact on language proficiency and learner autonomy, strategies for fostering critical thinking in the EFL classroom, and assessment method, methods that align with critical thinking goals such as performance-based tasks, portfolios, and self-reflection. Okay, uh, next slide. Yes, what is critical thinking? Uh, yes, critical thinking is the ability to analyze, evaluate, and interpret information objectively and logically. It it involves questioning assumptions, considering different perspectives, and drawing well-founded conclusions based on evidence and reasoning. Uh, I ask you to think of at least two examples from a daily life when you use critical thinking, and two write in the uh, chat box, please. And before you write, uh, I will tell you my uh, example. So for example, when going to the grocery shop, right, we apply critical thinking to make uh, um, informed uh, decisions about what to buy. For example, we may compare prices uh, and quality of different brands, uh, so read ingredient labels, to make healthy choices, consider exp expiration 
updates of the products. Uh, also, we uh, um, uh, foresee our budget. And based on this, we, uh, so to say, make analysis what to buy and um, so which product to buy. In this case, uh, critical thinking helps us to prioritize our needs, evaluate options, and make efficient shopping decisions. Uh, and now let me see if uh, we have uh, anything written in the chat box. Uh, okay, uh, so if uh, uh, nothing, I will proceed and let's deal uh, with the understanding, critical thinking. Okay, someone has written and let me uh, get back. So for example, of critical thinking is problem solving. Sure, sure, this is, uh, thank you very much. So let's continue with understanding. And when I read the, okay, let me read, please. Uh, when, uh, so when I read the uh, blurbs of books to choose what to read, exactly. When planning for my summer vacation, exactly. Uh, waking solution to a certain pro problem. Yes, that's right, that's right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's proceed. So understanding critical thinking in EFL education, right? Fostering critical thinking uh, uh, in EFL education goes beyond simply learning the language. It equips students with essential skills and attitudes uh, that are crucial for, uh, for success in both academic and real world contexts. Uh, in the context of EFL education, um, uh, yes, critical thinking plays a crucial role in developing language proficiency and overall language skills. So here we have some aspects. Uh, let's start from language comprehension. Critical thinking enables learners to, give, to go beyond surface level comprehension of language and dwell deeper in the meaning context and nuances of the English language. It helps learners uh, to analyze and interpret texts, uh, identify implicit meanings and make connections between different ideas or concepts. Uh, then comes problem solving skills. Uh, uh, so this allows EFL learners to approach language challenges uh, creatively and independently. So it encourages learners to think critically about language rules, uh, identify patterns and apply logical reasoning to overcoming language barriers. As for com communication skills, uh, by developing critical thinking skills, EFL learners become more effective communicators. They they learn to express their thoughts and opinions clearly, support their arguments with evidence, and engage in meaningful discussions or debates in English. Then comes analytical uh, skills. Yes, uh, analytical skills. Critical thinking helps uh, learn EFL learners uh, to develop analytical skills, enabling them to examine language structures. They identify errors, evaluate the effectiveness of their own or others' language use. So in this case, it promotes a deeper understanding of grammar, vocabulary, and language functions. Uh, as for cultural awareness, uh, as for cult cultural awareness, uh, um, critical thinking in EFL education encourages learners to consider cultural and social perspectives uh, embedded in language use. It helps learners to understand the impact of cultural factors on language choices, appreciate diverse viewpoints, and develop intercultural competence. Uh, and um, uh, the last point is about lifelong uh, learning. Uh, cultivating critical thinking skills in EFL um, education goes beyond the uh, uh, language acquisition. It equips learners with essential skills for life learning, uh, enabling them to identify and explore, evaluate and adapt new language contexts and challenges. Uh, besides this, uh, there, there, there are some benefits uh, benefits of fostering critical thinking skills. So uh, expanded cognitive skills. Uh, in this case, uh, these skills promote deeper learning and enable learners uh, to process, process information more effectively, think critically and uh, um, critically about complex language tasks and make informed decisions in language related situations. About independent learners, criti critical thinking empowers EFL learners to become independent and self-directed learners. It 
encourages learners to make ownership of their language learning process, explore resources autonomously, and develop strategies to overcome language challenges. Um, and um, uh, last but not least, uh, this is the preparation for higher education and careers. Critical thinking skills are highly valued in higher education and professional uh, settings. Fostering... Hello, yes, can I continue? Yes, fostering the skills in EFL learners prepares them for academic success, critical analysis of scholarly texts, and effective communication in their future careers. Uh, to sum up this part, uh, overall, Fostering critical thinking skills in EFL language learners not only enhance and enhances their language proficiency, but, but also equips them with important cognitive, communication, and problem-solving skills that are valuable uh, in various academic, professional, and personal contexts. Yes, uh, critical thinking and Bloom's taxonomy. We see the uh, pyramid of Bloom's taxonomy. So the, we want to say the critical thinking is uh, uh, tightly uh, connected to the Bloom's taxonomy uh, because it provides a framework for understanding and categorizing different levels of cognitive skills. At its core, critical thinking involves analyzing information, evaluating arguments, and synthesizing ideas <coughs> to make reasoned judgments or solve, solve problems. Uh, Bloom's taxonomy, with its hierarchical structure of cognitive process, ranging from remembering and understanding to applying, analyzing, evaluating, creating, aligns closely with the progression of critical thinking skills. Uh, by using this taxonomy as a guide, educators and learners can systematically develop and assess critical thinking abilities, moving from basic knowledge recall to higher order thinking uh, tasks that require deeper analysis, evaluation, and synthesis of information. Here we have brought some um, examples um, uh, based on the Bloom's taxonomy um, uh, so, um, or, uh, levels uh, uh, which vary from low to high. Let's see at this slide. In, in case we, uh, for example, bring uh, um, and show uh, this slide to the students, uh, um, in this case, students uh, um, um, are asked to name the objects with which represents the level of remembering, which is the lower order skill according to Bloom's taxonomy. At the next level of understanding, students are asked to describe the objects uh, or asked to recognize or even to translate to their uh, mother language. In this case, uh, they grasp the meaning of, of any, um, so to say, object and um, explain, right? So at the next slide, we have, uh, so to say, um, 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 exercise, finish the sentence. In this case, uh, students have to finish the sentence with a provided prompt letter and uh, finish it um, logically. In this case, uh, um, it is related uh, uh, to the stage of apply. Uh, also, this is the law order skill according to, Black to Bloom's taxonomy. For example, whenever I go to McDonald's, I buy a hamburger or I begin my day by drinking a glass of water or it's generally believed that children don't like spinach, right? In this case, students apply their, uh, uh, vo uh, their vocabulary um, based on the um, sentences. So this kind of uh, um, uh, activities um, and um, uh, exercises could be adopted uh, based on the uh, topic or needs uh, um, of the uh, uh, class, right? Then, then comes, uh, let's deal with the uh, high um, order uh, skill, for example, right? So this is, let's play a, a game. In this case, a student has to choose either a sneakers or a hamburger, right? And he or she has to finish with a reason. For example, he introduces himself. I am a 
uh, hamburger because I'm a well-rounded individual because layers of, uh, of personality and flavor. In case of sneakers, I'm a sneakers because I'm versatile, adaptable, and always ready to step into any situations with, with comfort, comfort and style. In this case, students used the high order skill. Uh, so let's deal with the next one. Students are asked to create their own pairs. We already touch, uh, touch the high order skills. So in this case, student analyzes uh, and evaluates, uh, for example, um, um, to try to find out what is the same or different between uh, you and your partner, right? I'm a bike or a Jeep or a chocolate cake or an ice cream. And later they are asked to create uh, your own priority. According to Bloom's, Bloom's taxonomy, the highest uh, so um, uh, level is create where students use uh, existing information to make something new. So in this in this uh, case, students use critical thinking skill and uh, also he applied Bloom's taxonomies, uh, the highest level um, to uh, creation, right? Now the uh, part uh, regarding the strategies uh, um, uh, will be dealt by Ms. Tamar and Tamar, the floor is yours. Thank you, Natia, for very uh, profound and very detailed explanation and activities related to boosting critical thinking in EFL classroom. Now I am I will be dealing mostly uh, so critical thinking and the importance of asking questions. And if I cite Nancy Willard, so sometimes questions are more important than the answers. And I do agree. It's a very good idea to ask a good question, which definitely uh, pokes students to uh, so. So uh, first of the critical thinking. And one of these uh, questions, which is considered to be closely related to critical thinking, it's related to Socratic questions. So Greek, uh, so, uh, so very important figure from Greek philosophy. And uh, this method serves as an attempt to promote EFL students' critical thinking in a language learning process. It's ordinarily understood that the process of learning uh, and the language tends to focus more on how to answer questions than how to ask productive, systematic and directed question. This is the way of Socratic way of asking questions. And we, now let's move to uh, so different strategies of asking questions. Uh, as it was mentioned, Socratic um, questioning is a method of inquiry and it is definitely related to asking uh, thought-provoking questions which stimulate critical thinking, also eliciting deep understanding like a going to, so high order skills, we call it HOTS, and challenge assumptions based on a good questions. And at the same time, this strategy is dealing with encouraging students to ask and answer open-ended questions about the content uh, they are learning and they are acquiring. And in this case, we can uh, use students to need to be using analytical questions that challenge assumptions and encourage reflection and pro promote, once again, deeper understanding uh, from the students. So when we talk about uh, strategies, and uh, let me give a, so now, now like a, uh, so, uh, so list of uh, different kinds of questions. And, uh, the first one is a clarification question. And we use clarification question in order to help students and uh, students uh, use it to uh, so more or less clarify the situation. So for the, what do you think the author means by, so uh, for example, uh, so describing the landscape in details. And can you explain this concept in your own words? And how does the sentence contribute to the overall meaning of the paragraph? This is related to the uh, clarifying the information or like a detail around the text. Another type of question, which is also used for uh, developing critical thinking, this is probing question. Probing question uh, is mostly uh, so aiming at, uh, so searching, uh, so information based on the, um, so questions, and why do you think the character reacted in this way? What evidence from the text supports your interpretation? How might this cultural practice influence the character's behavior? I think this profound question is a kind of uh, investigatory in the character. Yes, they are kind of like a, asking for detailed information. Another set of questions, this is related to, let me move to another slide. Sorry, I think this was repeating. So this is related to comparison question. So comparison questions, uh, mostly, uh, 
Uh, so uh, I'll formulate it in the following way. How does this text compare to answers we have read on a similar topic? What similarities or differences do you notice between these characters and in what ways does this cultural tradition differ from those in your country? So this is how to compare maybe objects, different phenomena of different topics. So this is a very good activity for productive stages because it's a more or less uses high order skills. Another type of question, this is related to analytical analysis question. So it's of course, it should be done in analytical reading also at this stage. And what are the main themes or motifs in this text? How does this author use this language to convey tone or mode? And what are implications of this event for the character's development? So these questions definitely are used in order to give more detailed information around the topic. So another type of question, which is called application questions. So in application questions, uh, so we mostly, uh, so uh, definitely uh, use the following uh, maybe formulations. How might you apply this concept to your own life or experiences? So this is mostly done at the application stage, or we call it follow-up. Uh, so stage once we have covered so uh, all two stages of the lesson. And can you think of a real world situation where this language skill could be useful or how could you adapt this communication strategy for a different cultural context? So this is very, uh, so I think uh, also uh, very much related to boosting and practicing high order skills. Another type of questions, which is also related to the strategies of asking questions, this is reflective questions and reflective questions help students, enable students to reflect on the information and on the ideas. And how has your understanding about the topic changed since we began discussing it? And we are like, uh, so listening to students' reflections on the topic. And what effects have you gained from these steps on activity? Or what questions do you still have about this concept? These are reflections questions. Another set of questions is related to evaluation question. And of course, it's a very good idea to evaluate the information or the knowledge obtained and to, to analyze it and do you agree in this case or disagree with the character decision and why again this can be done at production stage what are the strengths and weaknesses of the argument presented in the article and how effective is the author's use of evidence to support the claims uh, and another set of um, another type of question it's also inference question and from this uh, definitely the information uh, so uh, the answer should be inferred. It's not explicitly given. It's not the surface knowledge. It should, the reader should go beyond it. And what conclusions can you draw from the character action? So this detailed information and this information is not directly given in the text. And based on the evidence provided, what do you think it will happen? And what cultural values might be influencing the character's behavior in this scene? As, as we see, this is called inference questions and which was already so highlighted by me. Now, uh, again, when we talk about different types of questions, a good, uh, so, so we, I came in, we came across a very good, uh, so like, uh, uh, so denotations, we call it thick and thin questions. And what are these questions? Maybe you have got some idea, but based on the picture, which is provided by us, uh, as we see, uh, there is a kind of like a thick sandwich and the, another one is a thin, uh, so, um, so uh, sandwich, and uh, we can more or less uh, infer that it must be related to something maybe which which is very rich and something which is definitely not too much rich with information. And thin question, let's start with the thin one, is usually asked for literal information. Uh, and uh, what does it mean that literal information uh, they definitely doesn't require interpretation or argumentation or sustained conversation? It's uh, literally given in the text. Another type of question, which is thick question, can't be answered with a yes or no. It's not simple, it, it does not require a simple. Uh, so reply and usually it leads to deeper discussions and debates around the text. This is a thick question and as we see that it is a, also related to a boosting high order skills. How do I ask now? Let's try to ask uh, thin questions. Uh, let me give you a kind of uh, picture of a lady and um, mostly, so this is a kind of like a question words, like we call it journalist questions, who, what, we are, when. So this is the way how to ask uh, so thin questions. And now if you look at the picture and, and let's uh, kind of like um, demonstrate an example how to ask, how to think about some thin questions. So um, the picture is quite like, I think that clear and you can see it vividly. And um, so thin question, which is a very like a mostly common one is a, who is this girl in the photo? I think this is a very logical. Uh, so a uh, question, another one, when, where is this walking to? Where is she walking to? Yes, and what is she doing? I think all these questions, each of the questions can be answered 
in a very simple and, uh, manner and does not require too much thought to answer. I think this is very clear. Another type, examples of like uh, uh, ask, asking three questions was given. So now as we see, uh, you can think, uh, think that, uh, so when you ask these questions, it's unlikely that you will get any complex information. But by asking a thin question uh, about the photographs, we only learned a small amount of information, what has been happening. Now, let's try another picture and maybe you can be helping me out in the chat. Uh, so uh, there is a picture of a young man and if you look at the photograph and think about thin questions, it would be good now. Remember that your questions can start with journalists, WH questions, who, what, where, when, and how, and uh, they should be uh, should be answered uh, in one and or few words, yes? So, uh, examples, uh, of course, uh, I'm going to give you ready-made examples because I don't want to waste a lot of time on it, but some possible thin questions could have been. So, number one, what can be number one? Where is this man sitting? Of course, the answer is very logically, uh, not very, so maybe difficult to, so get it in the near part. How uh, many planes can we see out of the window? Yes, another so thin question again. And what is he waiting for? So these were the uh, these were like a thin questions which were asked, which could have been asked uh, in, in, in case of the second picture. Now let's practice uh, so asking uh, so um, thick questions, uh, like teaching our students to ask thick questions. Uh, some thick questions around the same topic, which was a lady, the young lady, a young girl uh, walking in the street, uh, could be. So for example, how would you feel if you were traveling with a girl in the picture? Another, I wonder why is the street, why there are no people in the street? Another question, why do you think the girl is on her own? So these are like definitely thick questions. The fact is that each of these questions makes you really think about the answer, yes? You, because I am sure if we ask this question, all speakers, all the members of the classroom can have different answers because the answers contain, of course, opinion, your opinion, contain more than one possible answer and make you infer understanding from the thinking about what happened before the picture we have the uh, statement. So as you can see, so uh, we can sum up into that. Uh, so by asking uh, these the questions, we can find the girl maybe on her own because she, the rest of your family are still sleeping. She might be backpacking on her own. This can be another reason. The street has no people because it might be early morning. There may be uh, so no one uh, because there is a maybe a religious uh, so festival or there uh, maybe I don't know. There can be another reason. Yes, and I would feel excited if I was traveling with her because I would be really seeing and uh, around and seeing a brand or new place uh, with her. So now uh, let's try asking three questions on the picture uh, with a, uh, as a young gentleman. Now you try that there is a you know, photograph and students should look at the photograph and think about thick questions. Uh, so it's very important to remember that uh, the questions should require thought to answer, could have more than one answer and can obtain opinions from students. For example, why do you think this young man is alone? Okay, this can be so thought provoking, a provocative maybe question. I wonder why the airport waiting lounge is so empty. Yes, because they're like maybe night flight. And how would you feel if you were traveling with him? So these are a potential thing, uh, thick questions, which could have been used based on the pictures of young gentlemen uh, waiting in the lounge. So another uh, strategy which can be very effective for asking thick and in this case, uh, uh, thick questions, this can be uh, giving the students a junk chunk of text uh, and, uh, uh, and after reading the text. Uh, so when you ask questions uh, to gain a better understanding of what you're reading, it's better to ask thick questions. So that's why students can be asked to read the text and think about three thick questions uh, which can be ask around the text. And remember that the answer to three questions are not found directly in the text. Now, of course, you can skim the text. We don't have maybe much time, but we will be sharing the slide. But this is a very uh, small text. It's a two paragraph text. And uh, so uh, potential like a six questions, uh, which I use, uh, which I can uh, can be uh, so asked by students. This can be, how does Hiccup's relationship with the toothless contrast with the instructions he gives to dragon before going to bed. I think it's a kind of like a little bit fairy tale, tale like a, so imaginary story. And how does the author use sensory image, 
imaginary, uh, imaginary imagery it in order to portray the sensation of the warmth experienced by hiccup when lying next to to sleep. Uh, but these are a kind of like maybe uh, it's not very for young learners definitely, but this definitely will help the students to uh, uh, think outside the box. Yes, to boost their critical thinking and uh, uh, use a kind of analytical uh, so skills as well. So this was um, yeah, yeah, related to asking a uh, think and think question. So let's remember that uh, think questions are related to simple answers. I think this is the main takeaway from this strategy and think questions definitely are related to asking uh, so complex information. And at the same time, it's always better to ask a thick question when you need extra information or you need to understand something more clearly around the topic. So this is a very good strategy. So I think more or less uh, we dealt with them. So strategy number one, another strategy is related to problem solving activities. And why do we need problem solving activities for critical thinking? First of all, uh, so these activities in English as a foreign language classroom helps you to develop critical thinking, uh, while at the same time it develops their language proficiency. And this could involve interpreting of authentic text, uh, at the same time resolving some communication, maybe misunderstanding, or we call it accidents, or create solutions to language challenges. Uh, so now let me give you a so kind of list of uh, uh, these activities. Uh, first of all, this can be real life tasks, and at the same time, students are uh, assigned a task which stimulates real life language uses, such as writing emails, making making phone calls or participating in mock job interviews. This can be very nice situation or maybe for business communication class, which I do with pleasure. Another task is a text-based problem solving uh, strategy. And uh, in this case, we provide our students with authentic text, like uh, maybe advertisement or like an opinion. Uh, so newspaper articles, opinion pieces, which present a problem or issue. And the students need to analyze the text, identify key information and propose sol solution. And at the same time, the students can create some comprehension exercises and, uh, and they, they have to inform the meaning from the context. Another task, uh, which is also related to uh, foster critical thinking, this is collaborative pro projects. Uh, and the same, in this case, we assign our students with projects which requires from them working together. This is also one of the forces of 20th century, uh, communication and collaboration. And, uh, and the students need to complete a uh, language related uh, a task or problem uh, by working uh, together. Another, one of my favorite strategies, which I use often uh, in especially illegal English classroom, this is debates and persuasion. persuasion. And uh, in this case, we organize debates or persuasive speeches on language topics, such as language learning, maybe problems, or language policy or cultural preservation and we need to assign students to argue different sides of the problem and uh, about the issue and challenge each other's arguments using critical thinking skill. Another, yeah, so now let's uh, move to uh, another yeah, so component of critical thinking, which is related to assessment. And what is assessment? We all are aware that assessment in a classroom is also very uh, important or essential for fostering uh, so critical thinking, such as uh, because it encourages high order skills, we call it HOTS, and promotes reflections and metacognition and provides feedback, feedback uh, among uh, so students for growth. Uh, uh, at the same time, it enhances uh, Problem solving abilities encourages active engagement among learners and prepares students for real world challenges where critical thinking is a very valuable skill, as it was mentioned by my colleague Natia. And uh, so these are the strategies for assessment, uh, assessing critical thinking. When the first one can be related to performance based tasks, these tasks require students to apply the critical thinking in real world scenario. And the examples include once again here presentations, debate, problem solving, and the task force, uh, so PBL. Another uh, so very effective assessment tool, this can be portfolio. Portfolio so provides uh, a comprehensive collection of so students' work, which showcases the critical abilities over time. And students can include the written assignment, the reflection uh, from peer-like observations, uh, and also projects, uh, and with analysis and synthesis of the information. And uh, this can be a very valuable assessment tool. Another topic is self-reflection. Self-reflection activities encourage students to assess their own thinking process and identify like gaps in the knowledge and also set goals for improvement. Uh, this can be done through journaling, journaling reflective essays, self-assessment questionnaires, and so on and so forth. And another uh, strategy for uh, assessing 
critical thinking. This can be problem solving tasks. This task once again assess students' ability to apply critical thinking skills to solve language related problems. And examples include here uh, written and spoken text, like audio, maybe text, or even podcast, and also in which. Um, yeah, yeah, which is based on uh, finding alternative ways of expressing ideas and responding to real life scenarios, which requires uh, critical thinking and decision making process. And uh, so another type of assessment, which is also related to so, uh, so philosopher Socratic, which is Socratic seminars. And Socratic seminars involve guided discussions in which students analyze and evaluate texts and ideas. And uh, the, the role of the teacher as a facilitator is very important, which asks thought provoking questions and encourage students to critically analyze and discuss the uh, topic. And assessment can be based on students' participation, engagement, depth of analysis, uh, and also ability to support the arguments with evidence. And uh, another uh, very, uh, one of our beloved tools is case study. Uh, and case study also presents real life scenarios or problems which require students to analyze. Uh, and also students work individually or in groups in, and to in order to analyze the situation or case uh, and identify key issues, provide well reasoned recommendation. And uh, assessment can be focusing on students' ability to think critically and analyze complex information and to uh, also provide effective solutions. Uh, and uh, last and not least, the task which is very effective uh, and important for assessing critical thinking, this is authentic assessment, which is one of my favorite one. And this assessment it simulates a real language usage and also requires from students uh, uh, applying critical thinking. And uh, the examples uh, uses uh, includes uh, persuasive essays, conducted research projects, also participate in mock uh, interview. Uh, and this assessment evaluates students' ability to analyze, once again, to evaluate and synthesize information, which is again high order skills. Uh, uh, and uh, let me recap that these assessment methods encourage students to think critically once again, apply the knowledge, uh, language skills in a meaningful situation and ways, and demonstrate the ability to analyze, evaluate, and synthesize information. They provide also a more comprehensive and authentic evaluation of students' uh, critical thinking skills in an EFL classroom. So, this is what I wanted to tell, and now, now my colleague will continue. With practical part. Yes, uh, thank you, Tamar, for this well and practical part. I will continue with uh, with case studies and and authentic stories. Uh, uh, case studies and authentic stories play a pivotal role in highlighting the practical application and benefits of critical thinking. They depict how individuals have a, have, have effectively applied critical thinking skills to solve problems, uh, make decisions, and make achieve um, uh, positive outcomes. Uh, case studies provide um, detailed understandings of specific situations, allowing learners to play, uh, to analyze the uh, challenges faced, uh, the approaches taken, and the results obtained. Uh, whereas authentic stories highlight the benefits of critical thinking, showcasing how it leads to innovative solutions, improved performance and overall, overall uh, success. Uh, so since we uh, teach ESP um, in our, at, 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 the, our, at our institutions, so namely we teach uh, so business English and maritime English, we would like to provide you with the lesson plans that are uh, constructed uh, on one of the same, uh, so to say, you know, activities. Uh, so, Tamar, please, next slide. Uh, so, uh, I will not be dealing uh, in detail, I will not be dealing in details uh, with the lesson, bless, lesson plans, but we'll uh, summarize what do we have. Since this lesson plans is, re is regarding the uh, business English um, classroom, uh, so the topic is um, economic profile of the country, budgeting, uh, recession, so the um, the whole activities are uh, based uh, on is the there are some some other voices Tamar uh, yes can you please yes, ask sorry ask yes yes I'm asking yes, yes I'm asking in the chat please please it really prevents us can you unmute unmute the speaker I've gone and muted him don't worry okay oh, thank you not yet. 
Continue. So the duration of uh, of the class is uh, sixty minutes. Uh, the level is uh, somehow C one and C two. So this one is the advanced level um, lesson plan. So it has the warm up, uh -huh. so pre reading, listening. Uh, so uh, so vocabulary speculation, and then next time Tamar, please next slide. So as a follow up activity, it has uh, uh, so to say uh, this uh, task uh, to complete. Uh, then let me show you that the this. Um, lesson plans also includes uh, uh, so uh, so TED talk and uh, YouTube video for um, listening activities. Uh, so we have provided uh, the int small introductory uh, part, but I will not uh, read it now because I have to deal with the maritime link English lesson plan. So this part part concerns uh, um, real life accidents, uh, mooring winch ties up crew member causing serious injury. So again, the here, here, the duration is 60 minutes. Uh, the level of students uh, um, are B1 to 6 level. So uh, so this is here we have then at the next slide, the detailed, um, so to say, um, uh, plan of the lesson. And also uh, here we have the text at the next slide. And uh, as uh, I have mentioned, it has uh, um, at, at the listening uh, stage, the uh, YouTube video and um, uh, TED talk. So why uh, do we use uh, so TED talks and YouTube videos uh, in our classroom? Right? Why, why they are beneficial? Because uh, so they are valuable tools in English as a foreign language education due to their authentic uh, language use, diverse range of topics and visual uh, supports. They offer learners exposure to nature, uh, English spoken by native speakers, uh, aiding in listening comprehension and language acquisition. These resources engage learners' interests uh, and uh, broaden their understanding uh, of, uh, of the world. Visual aids in these videos enhance comprehension, while interactive activities foster critical thinking and language production. So accessible and flexible TED Talks and YouTube videos empower learners to engage uh, with English outside the classroom, facilitating self-directed learning and language practice. Uh, then um, uh, to sum up, uh, to sum up um, uh, the uh, the aim of the above discussed problem, so problem problem solving tasks and case studies in both ESP classes uh, was to activate the receptive and productive skills and to support the, to boost a creative and critical thinking. And, and text based problem solving tasks with authentic texts and articles help students to identify key information, analyze the text, and uh, propose solutions. As a conclusion, and to wrap up our, so to say, web today's webinar, a critical thinking is essential in EFL classroom, classroom as it enhances language proficiency, develops communication skills, fosters independent learning, cultivates problem-solving abilities, promotes cultural, uh, cultural awareness, prepares uh, for higher education and careers, and supports life, life, lifelong learning. Uh, so, and also it empowers EFL learners to become active, autonomous, and effective users of the English language. Now we ask you to uh, make a, a, a small, short survey. Uh, Tamar, please uh, uh, copy the link uh, for our colleagues uh, to help us. I have him already. Yes, him already. yes please yes. Click, the, click the link. You can click. To complete the small survey. So can you present the question is about to choose the most effective strategy for boosting critical thinking in EFL classroom. So you have to vote for different uh, two strategies and we will be uh, kind of seeing the result of the joint, joint voting. So I give, we give you maybe two minutes. In the meantime, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box. So um, they were interested in the presentations uh, to whether the, it will be provided uh, or not. Uh, 
So if if you would like to provide it to our members, that's completely fine. Yes. If you'd like to share your emails as well, your contacts, please feel free to do that in the chat box. Okay. And that way our members can uh, directly reach out to you. Wonderful. So I'm going through the chat box and um, we have a question here. It says, what are the challenge? Oh, it keeps moving because uh, everyone's talking, but it says, what are the challenges of developing critical thinking skills in a classroom with a diverse student population? Dr. Tamari, Dr. Natia, do you have any responses to that question? I could not hear. I'm sorry. The last part, can I, I, I will read no it. No worries. So it says here, can what I are the challenges the of developing critical thinking skills in a classroom with a diverse student population? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want? I will start. So first mm -hmm. of all, uh, the challenges of boosting critical thinking uh, is related to, uh, so like a lack of... Uh, uh, fluency and uh, in like um, mixed level classes of course some students uh, struggle with uh, expressing their ideas uh, so in a like um, free and in a like um, fluent manner that's why this can be one of the challenging at the same time uh, the barrier of expressing their ideas uh, and to make the voices heard this can be another challenge yes because some students are shy a little bit and they don't want to uh, once again maybe express their opinion on it maybe there is a stigma yes in the society uh, but still with as educators we need to encourage our students all the time first of all to of course we should care for language fluency and um, so uh, uh, and, uh, and accuracy as well, but uh, it's very important then to uh, to adapt uh, and to kind of like uh, adapt these questions according to the uh, learners' uh, so level. Uh, and at the same time, we need to encourage them. It's very important to, to uh, so maybe less is more, uh, and uh, they need to be encouraged maybe by uh, maybe by or praised uh, for like giving uh, uh, some uh, so responses. Uh, and this should be definitely uh, at the same time beneficial for the uh, so. Uh, practicing their productive skills uh, and these challenges of course uh, uh, should be monitored uh, by educators and uh, uh, so gradually uh, so uh, progress can be achieved of course it's it's very uh, it's not especially with a, we mostly teach all levels of students and we, when we uh, enter the first uh, so a group for instance, the first year of studies it's not very, it's always easy to um, kind of like boost the critical thinking and because they may not be much uh, accustomed to uh, asking different questions and answering these questions. This is my approach. I think Natia will be also responding. Go Natia. ahead, yeah. And we have actually a couple of questions, so please okay. yes. Can I read out the next one? Why our, our, our students are not always critical? Critical thinking is a high value 21st century skill, yes. Not surprisingly, critical thinking skills have now become a must tech learning point in language uh, in the L2 curriculum and other subjects curriculum. For example, science, math, and humanity subjects. The question is, how can we, uh, can we help our students become more critical? So um, in case of um, EFL learning, right, uh, I can ask uh, from this uh, point of view, maybe uh, to provide uh, diverse perspectives or uh, to give students to have and ask uh, open-ended questions to make their minds, uh, so to say, work more rather than only uh, to read and learn the text by heart. They have to create something uh, uh, and apply. So, so this is the, so to say, Bloom's taxonomy is uh, uh, so level uh, the the highest uh, um, high order skill creation. So step step by step approach will lead our students uh, to uh, think more critically uh, than they than they have than, than they do. Could you please share your PPT? Yes, we can. Uh, we, I have I have written my own email, Tamara. Will you please uh, write yours as well? Thank you. Thank you once again for all of the insightful information that you've shared with us today. I 
think that brings us to an end. Okay. So which classroom activities and games can promote the critical thinking skills? Uh, as, I as we have uh, presented in our webinar, we use uh, case studies and authentic uh, materials uh, uh, since it boosts uh, their, so to say, uh, the, it, it boosts their, uh, so, so it activates uh, um, their language um, to the topic uh, and on the topic. Okay. okay. Now let me share the uh, results of the survey. Oh. I, okay. I think this can be interesting because it's also uh, partially answers. Uh, uh, so a kind of uh, finding. Do you see the results? As we see, uh, so most of the uh, participants, uh, so um, so the seventeen, uh, not uh, we don't have full results, uh, full results yet. Seventeen, so majority of them, they kind of like uh, prefer to use uh, problem solving activities. Yes, which can be understandable. And thank you for your uh, input, uh, dear participants, and also um, authentic materials. Also, well, I have been also. <laughs> by majority of you, collaborative learning and collaborative projects, debates, discussions, and reflection and evaluation. So these are the results. And I'm sure it will be very good if others also continue uh, continue voting. And thank you very much for your input and for your interest. I have already provided my uh, so email, but I can do it once again. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much, ladies, for your invaluable presentation today. I think um, the uh, members and participants today were exposed to numerous um, ways and strategies that they can use in class. Uh, honestly speaking, there were so many um, uh, and there's, there was so much information that they could use, uh, as well as uh, the survey. I think that also sheds a lot of light um, on this as well. Uh, so we've gotten a couple of direct messages as well. Everybody is uh, thanking you for the informative presentation and the valuable workshop. Um, we will definitely be providing uh, your information and the recording will be posted on our YouTube channel for those who would like to revisit the presentation and uh, would like to take, let's say, more extensive notes uh, of the presentation presented today. So thank you once again for your time. Thank you once again for your information. And uh, we look forward to seeing all of our members next month for our upcoming webinar. So please do join our um, social media. Please do check our website for any news and information that you might need. Thank you all so very much. Thank you very much uh, for, for for to the participants for the active enrollment and participation in the chat box. Thank you. Have a nice Thank day. You.